Let's get to this, guys. It's hammer time! <laughs> Should I be shot for that? Hello, uh, we're doing a movie review. We're continuing our reviews on the Hammer Frankenstein series. I'm Christian, this is my friend Jeremy, and my friend John. Hello. And the movie we want to review is Frankenstein Must Be Destroyed. Now, what Frankenstein Must Be Destroyed came out in 1969, and this is the fifth film in the Hammer Frankenstein series. The first few films in the series were The Curse of Frankenstein, The Revenge of Frankenstein, The Evil of Frankenstein, and Frankenstein Created Woman. Now, Evil of Frankenstein and Frankenstein Created Woman both appeared to be set outside of continuity, like, they didn't appear to be in continuity with the first two films of this series. This is the first one since The Revenge of Frankenstein that you could make a case is actually in continuity with the first one. Like, you could sort of make a case that maybe this has taken place years and years after the events of The Revenge of Frankenstein. I mean, he did technically die in that one, but then uh, he transferred his brain into a body that looked just like his old body, so maybe. At the same time, though... There's, they don't really reference the events from the first two movies, so it, it's hard to say. Although I will say this movie is definitely true to how Frankenstein was in the first two movies, because in the first two films, he was very much the villain, whereas in Evil of Frankenstein and Frankenstein Created Woman, he was very much an anti-hero. This definitely returns him to being a villain, because he's vile in this movie. Uh, but what do you guys think of uh, Frankenstein Must Be Destroyed? I think it's a decent entry in the series. Uh, yes, I I kind of like that he's back as the villain. Just, uh, you know, good to see him back to his old evil ways, I guess. Yeah, what did you think of this one? It was probably the best of, like, the Hammer sequels I've seen thus far in this series because I loved it how, like, it had that, like, presence, that moment of, like, the first two films where he was, like, betraying, like, a villain compared to, like, the last ones where he was more, like, anti-hero. Yeah, a lot of people seem to say that this is the best of the Curse of Frankenstein sequels. It's not my personal favorite, but I can see why people love this one so much. I mean, this is a damn good movie. It is. This is a really good freaking yeah. film. yeah. I just love, like, the, sto the story to it. It was just, like, I think it had an amazing story to it. Now, what the plot of Frankenstein must be destroyed is, under an assumed name, Victor Frankenstein comes to this boarding house run by a young woman named Anna. And Anna's fiancé, Carl, is a doctor at a local asylum where a former associate of Victor Frankenstein, Dr. Brandt, who has gone insane, is now being held at. Now, in order to support Anna's mother, Carl has been stealing narcotics Narcotics, and Frankenstein discovers this, and he blackmails both of them into helping him kidnap Dr. Brandt so they could perform a brain transplant on him. And that's the basic plot line of Frankenstein Must Be Destroyed. Now, in the film, Peter Cushing reprises his role as Victor Frankenstein. Veronica Carlson plays Anna. Simon Ward plays Carl. Thorley Walters plays a police inspector. George Pravda, sorry for butchering his name, plays Dr. Brandt. Freddie Jones plays Professor Richter, who is the person that Brandt's brain eventually gets put into. Maxine Audley plays Brandt's wife. Now, an interesting fact about this actress that's probably not interesting to anybody but me, but this actress actually died literally on the day I was born. So, clearly, I'm her reincarnation. Now, as as we point out before, Victor Frankenstein is very much the villain this time around, like he was in the first two, but this is probably him at his most evil. I said in my review of Curse of Frankenstein that Peter Cushing's Victor Frankenstein is one of my top, like, cinematic villains, and this is actually one, this movie is the reason I consider him to be one of the great cinematic villains, because... He is a despicable human being in this one. He's cunning and manipulative, and there is actually a scene in this movie where he rapes the character of Anna, uh, which definitely makes him completely irredeemable at that point. But the thing is, though, Peter Cushing is so charismatic that as vile as he is in this movie, I don't want to say you like him because you don't, but at the same time... He's so charming as Frankenstein, yeah. despite how horrible of a human being he actually is. Uh, now, that rape scene 
was kind of controversial because I know what Peter Cushing and even uh, Terrence Fisher, who directed this movie, and Veronica Carlson, they didn't like the scene at all. Like, uh, and apparently they only shot the scene because they wanted to like uh, appease the American distributors. Like, the American distributors of the film insisted on that scene. Which doesn't surprise me because uh, this was sort of the beginning of the New Hollywood movement. So uh, films in America were becoming a lot more violent. But what do you think of that scene? Well, it's pretty disturbing, I'd say. And, um, of course, it's definitely not the most graphic uh, you know, rape scene I've ever seen. But, uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's all implied, still implied, so it's still pretty disturbing. I see why people at the time didn't like it. I could see why Peter Cushing and Terrence Fisher wouldn't have liked it. Uh, what do you think of the other characters in the film? They're pretty good. You know, the two protagonists, they're pretty much stuck in a hopeless situation, which makes us feel extra sorry for them. And I uh, also feel sorry for the doctor who gets kidnapped and has his brain transplanted. I mean, they're all sympathetic characters, yeah. really. Yes, I felt bad for what, what's her name who got raped. Uh, Anna was the character. Yeah, she was played by Veronica Carlson. Yeah, I definitely really fell for her after that. That scene was like, oh man. Yeah, you notice that they never really mention that afterwards, no. but you could tell it's lingering in the background. Oh yeah, you like could... the next scene where you see uh, her and Frankenstein together, you could just feel the tension in that scene. You can also like feel like when she's like alone and stuff, she's because she's tr uh, traumatized from that event. What do you think of uh, that one that police inspector in the movie, who's played by the same actor who uh, played Frankenstein's assistant in the previous film? He's pretty obnoxious. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Like that one scene where the uh, wife of the doctor is kidnapped. I know it was stupid of me to not go to you immediately and he's like yes it was very stupid of you <laughs> I feel like it was like like for comedic or something like that yeah it was done for comic relief and that was also something apparently that character wasn't in the original script really? and at the time they were making it they felt they even felt at the time he was unnecessary because it's such a grim movie like it's Probably the most serious of all these movies. Uh, so to have this comic relief character kind of throws things off a little bit. But I kind of liked him, though, yeah. just because I thought he was so funny. I mean, this was a good entry in the series. It uh, you know, it definitely, like you said, shows Dr. Frankenstein at his most vile. And, um, yeah, it's just... It's definitely got a tragic element to it. I mean, the other, the last one, Frankenstein created a woman that had... That was also tragic. Yeah. yeah. This one's tragic, too. And that, uh, you know, the doctor is completely... His mind is completely misplaced in a different person's body. Just like I mean, Ghost of Frankenstein? What that must feel like. It must be horrible. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's just it. a decent entry in the series. I'd say it's a very good entry. Yeah, I think it's a really good one, too. Uh, any closing thoughts on this one, John? Uh, remember of Revenge? Like, uh, the, when they swipe the brain, it's, they had a similar, like, premi premise to yeah, that Yeah, it's bit. a similar premise, and this is another thing that might contradict the idea of this being in continuity with the yeah. first two, is Frankenstein in the movie talks about how what, he never successfully transplanted a brain before, and it's like, well, in Revenge, Revenge. you did. <laughs> So it's like, at this point, I don't think they really gave a crap about continuity. Of course not. So that was our review on Frankenstein Must Be Destroyed. Our next movie review will be on the horror of Frankenstein.